our next guest went from rolling with the homies in the 90s classic movie, Clueless, to now solving crimes on his show, FBI. Please welcome Jeremy Sisto. Hey. Hi, Jeremy. Hi, Jeremy. Hi, Jeremy. Welcome to the show. Hi. Hey, guys. How are you? Good. Oh, yeah, great. What coast are you calling in from? I am in New York. The, well, yesterday, the snowy New York, and it snowed. It was beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's well, our munchkin is in New York, Adrian, so we feel I you am. on that. Um, <laughs> Jeremy, you this used is... to travel back and forth between L.A. and New York. So is your mm. whole family with you in New York right now? Yeah, they are. Usually I do. I travel back and forth every four days. Obviously, now is not the time to be doing that. Our kids are also in remote learning, so we brought them out here. And actually, we are... Uh, you know, we're inspecting some schools out here to consider moving them Ooh. towards, but don't tell them because we have to do a oh. whole, like, it's a whole, um, uh, it's kind of a spy job. We have to get it into their brain, reverse psychology. Yes. It's yes. a whole process. Yes. Just, just have them watch Hamilton and tell them it's the greatest city in the world. <laughs> I think they know that. It's just they have, we have a nice situation at home. They love their friends. Yeah. They, you know, it's uh, changes. It. Yeah. You know, my daughter's in sixth grade. That's a big thing to change schools at that time. Oh, so oh, we might go yeah, back to true. the transferring back and forth. But, uh, you know, we got to be sensitive about that. Well, That's we're true. wishing you luck with that. Um, now, Thank you're always working, but the jobs weren't always easy to come by back in the day. Let's be honest, right? Mm. So we heard you auditioned for the movie Dazed and Confused, and it didn't exactly go to plan. So what happened exactly? Mm. It's one of my favorite Yeah, movies. great. Great movie. Link later. Yeah, I was yes. 17, what was 91, 92. I was a teenager obsessed with the 70s, and I'd done one movie, and yeah, I was testing for the lead in this film, and so we flew to LA and uh, it was between me and Jason London for the lead. And I was actually staying with him because he was dating my sister at the time, different story. What? And um, uh, and yes, it was a big <laughs> uh, mix and match want. day. All of the actors that were in the movie were there and more, including myself. And uh, it was just me and him. And by, as the day progressed, hours into it, I started to realize that whatever happened, it was not going my way. And I was sulking a bit and wandering through the casting office when I find a sheet that they send out to all the agents. All the characters were written on there, descriptions of them. And under the Pink Floyd character, which is the character that uh, Jason London played, it said, a Jeremy Sisto type. So what I learned in that moment was that he had written this role for me, or at least had me in mind, and somehow, I had ruined it within that day. It was a very just depressing moment for me, but one of many in a, That's in a, crazy. Uh, a, a, a difficult That's profession. That's wild. That's wild. Wow. And I'm sure so many actors or just people trying to accomplish something in life can definitely relate to those kind of moments. But, but mm. one job that did work out for you, one of my favorites mm. of all time, was your role as Elton in Clueless. I'm not gonna lie, when you first came on the screen, I was right now just totally fangirling because I'm such a huge fan of the movie that just celebrated 20, its 25th anniversary and it's still a huge part of pop culture today. So do people react the way I'm reacting when they meet you? Do they say the lines of the movie to you? Are they like, me and Ty don't make sense. You and me makes, you know, like, do they have those moments? That's a good one. I don't hear that one very often. Yeah, it's been, it's gone through evolutions, you know, many generations. It's, it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty amazing to be a part of something that has evolved so with the new generations. And somehow yeah. each set of kids growing up can connect to these characters. And so, yeah, mm -hmm. it's been, it's, you know, in the beginning it was, it was, a. Uh, <clears throat> It was a different feeling being a part of something that was uh, so contemporary. As I get older, it becomes something I, I have a warmer and warmer feeling about. Yeah, Aww. so cool. Well, so My daughter cool. actually and her friends dressed up as the clueless characters for Halloween a couple of years ago. That is and awesome. that was, uh, yes, that was a. Uh, uh, made me feel old, but it was nice Iconic to... Iconic uh, style. <laughs> so cool. Yeah. So yeah. cool. You're not old. That's really, really cool. Uh, Jeremy, you also have a few independent films out, one called Last Night in Rossi and the other one called Wichita, which your character catches his wife in a lie that she thought she could work her way out of. Have you ever found yourself in a similar situation? Has anybody? Well, you know, I'm I'm a I'm a, actually a very bad liar. Um, I I did when I was single. I felt there was a period where you did have to 
withhold some truths, not maybe lie, but there was just, uh, you know, there was some stuff you had to hold back. So I got better at it for a period, but it wasn't good for my soul. As I am now, I think a lot of actors are like this. I feel like you can see through me pretty easily. I don't know if it's true or not, but I think that's one of the things that draws me to being an actor. So, uh, uh, so yeah, I, I, I try not to have too many uh, realities going on. Compartmentalizing is something I, I try to leave in my past. Well, Jeremy, Makes you sense. might not be good at lying, but on CBS's hit show, you play an FBI agent. So you got to be good at spotting a liar or a criminal, right? Mm. Mm. Yes. Again, not in real life, though. I'm pretty gullible in real life. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm actually great a great actor. viewer great for actor. any kind of movies because uh, I, I always fall for, for whatever the surprise twist is. I don't like to see movies with other people mm -hmm. because they always discover it before me and ruin it. Uh, so I think my gullibility is, 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 you know, it's something that's good. It's a positive trait yeah. of, my, of my character, but um, yeah. others might laugh at it at times. Sure. I'm okay with that's that. That's my Come on, acting skills. skills. I hear you. All right, well, let's take a look of, at a clip of you in FBI. A five-year-old Grace Harris was abducted from the cabin in Harriman State Park a little over an hour ago. Mother called it in, said they were on a family trip, just Grace, her parents, and her aunt and uncle. So where were the adults when she was taken? Just outside the cabin, sitting around a campfire. Every parent's worst nightmare, right? Yeah. What do we know about the family? Uh, parents are Ben and Rhonda Harris, both 32 years old, live on the Upper West Side. She is an investment banker with Pinnacle Financial. He's a defense attorney with Kagan and Green. Who we think they were targeted? Well, no ransom demand. The girl was abducted far away from home, so. That is so great. I can't That's wait to work. tune in. Jeremy, thank you for being here today. It was so much fun chatting with you. FBI will be back with the new original episode on, with a new original episode on Tuesday, February 9th on CBS.